Welcome back, everyone. Sports Medicine Weekly on this Sunday morning. Steve Cashel and Dr. Brian Cole. Again, our website is sportsmedicineweekly.com. Time now for our Ask the Doctor segment. We do it each week here on Sports Medicine Weekly. Very easy to get involved. It gives our listeners the opportunity to have Dr. Cole address their specific sports injury issues. Easy to submit a question. Go to our website, sportsmedicineweekly.com. On the homepage, you're going to find a link underneath the photo of Dr. Cole and yours truly. Click on that link and you can submit your question. First question from one of our listeners, Dr. Cole, this morning. Dr. Cole, my 13-year-old son suffered a buckle fracture to his right wrist while sliding into second base during a baseball game. Please tell us in layman's terms what a buckle fracture is and the best treatment. So, Steve, um, one thing about young people is their bones um, are sort of malleable. And young people, when um, you know, much like I've talked about growth plate injuries and so forth, they get different kinds of injuries that adults get. So they may have the same amount of energy that goes into a forearm, um, sliding into a second base, falling off a jungle gym, those kinds of things, um, where they don't break the bone, but they bend the bone. And it doesn't crack because the bone is still somewhat malleable. Uh, rather than brittle and fracturing. And um, those are often treated without surgery. You have to treat them like fractures because they hurt. And you certainly, there's a level of vulnerability that if they went back too early, they could take a non-fracture bending bone, if you will, and create a fracture. So we will often immobilize them. It does two things. It protects them, um, but it also reduces pain because these can be very painful initially. Um, The good news is they hardly ever require uh, uh, having to be set you know, where we actually have to manipulate it to get it back into position. Sometimes they do, but rarely. And they hardly ever go on to a complete fracture that would require surgery, such as uh, something that would require screws and plates. So it still has to be respected initially as a fracture to manage pain and the prevention of further injury. But it usually recovers predictably very quickly. I mean, within two weeks, kids are without pain, but we often end up holding them a minimum of four to six weeks just because of the risk of re-injury. If they go back, they feel good, but they're still vulnerable to re-injury. So that's that's the, the information surrounding a buckle fracture. Okay, Dr. Cole, last question of the show. Here's another good one from one of our listeners. Dr. Cole, my eight-year-old daughter suffered a knee-to-knee hit with another girl during a soccer match. Some told us it's a bone bruise. My question to you is, do bones actually bruise? Yes. So, Steve, another great question um, from our listeners. And bone bruises are surprisingly common. They usually result from a significant traumatic injury. They are sort of a subset of maybe a fracture or a break, but it really is a reaction in the bone itself. It can be super painful. Like a bone bruise in the knee, for example, you can take an x-ray and the x-ray will be completely normal. But if we were to obtain an MRI, the MRI would show a bruising pattern of basically fluid in the bone showing a, a reaction or a stress reaction from the impact. And those can be very painful. They can take a number of weeks to get better. We see bone bruises, for example, even in the NBA uh, through what we call hyperextension injuries, where a player will be running on the court and they inadvertently hit their heel and they hyperextend their knee and they jam their tibia into the femur. Or like the one our listener described uh, that you're asking me about, where there was just a direct knee to knee injury. These are generally injuries that do not require anything other than symptom um, modification or or activity modification to to reduce symptoms, and they can get better very quickly. And with these, with young active people, I am actually pretty aggressive about getting them back to their sports based on their symptoms only. It's not likely that if they were to return too early, for example, that they'll run run into a fracture situation or break situation. So you can really symptoms guide an individual's return to play. But because they behave a little like fractures, they can take six to eight weeks to actually get better. So people have to be patient because they still may have symptoms. But the good news is they get better pretty quickly. And it's not generally ever a chronic or longstanding problem, nor does it ever require surgery. Okay. Great stuff, Dr. Cole. We're out of time. Uh, Have a great week and uh, stay healthy and safe, my friend. You as well, Steve. Uh, Look forward to seeing you uh, next Sunday. Fantastic. A reminder that podcast segments are always available to hear on Sports Medicine Weekly. You can listen to segments and past shows through our blog, Apple, Google, Spotify, Pandora, YouTube, iHeartRadio, and many other podcast channels. Again, our website, sportsmedicineweekly.com. And that proceeds from our show, Sports Medicine Weekly. Go to support orthopedic research at Rush through the Live Active Now.org fund. 
Many thanks to our producer, Shane Reardon, also to David Cole for managing our website and our business operations, as well as Samantha Smith from Midwest Orthopedics at Rush. For Dr. Brian Cole, I'm Steve Cashel saying so long. We thank you for listening to Sports Medicine Weekly. We'll be back next Sunday morning, 7 a.m. with a brand new edition of Sports Medicine Weekly, only on 670 The Score.